Oh, <sighs> oh, hello. We did it. We survived another week on the planet Earth, what? and we're it's here. It's Thursday. We didn't we survive. We survived. What do you mean we survived? We survived since last Thursday, which was the last time we did this show. That's not, that's not an accomplishment. We do, we do it every week, except when we don't. This is Up at Noon. My name is Max. This is Brian. Hello, everyone. And this it's is a show that we do every Thursday. Yeah, at noon. Right? Yeah. This time, right? Yeah. Now. It's, the, it's the most demanded time slot in programming history. Thursday you know how, at noon. Do you know how much we love doing the show? I'll tell you how much we love doing the show. Uh, they're having a meeting right now at IGN where they're debating the best movies of 2017. Guess what they got for that meeting? They got food. Guess what that food is? Pizza. Guess what the number one food on earth is? You guessed it. Pizza. That's a different meeting. We will be ranking those foods separately. But we can't go to that meeting because we're doing up at noon. Yeah. Um, I love pizza. What am I have today? Some garbage ass salad. Yeah. Leaves. Leaves Look at this. with a sauce on top. This is hard. This is hard anyway, to maintain this. <laughs> we, what is this? This show, this show is about a lot of things. We do all kinds of stuff here. We talk about games and movies and toys and fun mm-hmm. stuff, and, and we will be talking about pizza in a moment. Uh, you can watch the show on all sorts of different platforms, such as YouTube, Twitch. There, <laughs> there's pizza right there. It's not real. It's 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 actually an illusion. Don't I, uh, that's, We're on we're on Roku. We're on Facebook. We're on Xbox. We're on PS4. We're on uh, just a bunch of stuff. If you haven't checked it out, IGN.com now has a built-in uh, chat on the on the site. So if you watch uh, streaming on IGN's main platform, uh, you can actually comment on there. And we have our Twitch chat open. No YouTube. No one is in the Twitch <laughs> chat room. If you're in there, say hello, please. Is this thing on? Let us know. We don't know. Yeah. Um, yeah, big week. We have a lot of stuff to talk about today. Uh, Battlefront 2 is out, obviously. Uh, Max and I didn't get a chance to do podcasts beyond this week, and we've been playing a lot of that game. Spoilers, we played probably like 100 hours, 150 hours c- combined of the last game. We, Yeah, we were those two guys who were like, hey, hold, I, we, we yeah. still like it. And, you know. uh, so we want to really dig into that. Um, there's some other stuff we want to talk about. We did an awesome Let's Play a Farming Simulator coming up. Uh, so stick around. We'll be here for the full hour. Mostly, hopefully. Maybe we might, we'll we might actually bail early. And, yeah, you know, yeah. Anyway, yeah. Uh, the Twitch chat is telling us that we are, we, it is on. And everyone is Hi, saying, everyone. There oh, we go. No, term is, is saying it's broken. Oh. Okay, so apologies if it's broken. But anyway, uh, so are we. Yeah. Um, news of the week. Time for the really big, pressing, breaking news. The big stuff that's dropping this week. They're doing a Home Alone 2 hotel experience at the Plaza Hotel. The hotel from the movie Home Alone 2 Lost in New York in New York City. The old Manhattan. The Big Apple. The home of the buildings. Uh, yeah, they're having basically uh, they're having like a special like themed ho- uh, home alone experience yeah. where you can stay there. It starts at eight hundred ninety five dollars, which is it's it's expensive, but it's well, like it's a luxury hotel. hotel. Yeah. So, okay. Let me. What do we get? What do we get with this? So I put a picture of pizza there. You don't get a pizza, which what? is weird. Yeah, you don't get the pizza. You have to get the pizza separately. You get a four. You get a four hour limo ride uh, around New York City with you, no pizza you in can, it. You have to get the pizza separately. What? what yeah. Are they out of yeah. their minds? I don't, That's I the don't most know. important thing. Yeah. It's it's pretty weird. But uh, they do have like a weird '90s themed menu that has. They have like. Sunny D and Zima themed drinks on the menu, which is weird because at no point in that film does Kevin McAllister get get ripped on on Zimas. Okay, that's weird. Brandon, get out of there. Anyway, uh, yeah, so that's the big news of the week is Home Alone 2 is getting a hotel experience. Wait, so what, do you get two nights in the hotel? I don't know. I didn't read the... Do you have the, to meet Trump? He's print. in that movie. He is in that movie. It's weird. If you if you Google uh, Plaza Hotel Home Alone 2, most of the photos are of, uh, of President Trump's cameo in there before he was the president. Yep. Um... Another big news, uh, it was announced this morning that 20th Century Fox is in talks with James Franco to make a Multiple Man movie. If you don't know who Multiple Man is, boy, you are missing out. He's one of the best third, third-tier third X-Factor characters. Jamie, yep. Jamie Madrox, yeah. He's, he's a, he, he, he multiplies. It's, it's, he makes copies of himself. He does. Uh, interesting character. Very uh, proud of I don't know if he's interesting enough to carry an X-Men movie on his own. It's sort of an odd choice. Uh, I mean, basically, they've done this before. They've done, like, Multiplicity. Uh, I don't know. What, what's another movie where there's a bunch of the same guy? That was the only one. Is it really? Okay, yeah, so Multiplicity, it. starring Michael Keaton, is the only other movie like that. But, yeah, James Franco, uh, if you like James Franco, good news, because there's going to be a bunch of him in a movie, maybe. And, I mean, they're still also working on a Gambit movie and X-Force and X-Men 8 or whatever. So that's still happening, maybe. Mm-hmm. Uh, speaking of things that are happening in the next year, they've announced Fantastic Beasts 2. It's not Harry Potter. It takes actually takes place almost a century before Harry Potter is even born, but it's set in that universe. They really shot themselves in the foot the by naming it. The Crimes of the Grindelwald? Yes, Fantastic Beasts 2 is called Crimes of the Crimes of Grindelwald. The kerning is a little bit odd there. It's kind of tricky to figure out what order you're supposed to read that title in. What's going on with this font? Uh, it's whimsical. Yeah, it looks like a uh, like a place that sells bombs. So, yeah, here's the thing. I I tried to like Fantastic Beasts. I love Harry Potter. I love those books. I've read them all a bunch of times. I think the movies are fine. There's some are better than others. I would still watch them. Uh, 
This is this this has lost me. It's just I, I, it's so like it's so far removed from the thing that appealed to me about Harry Potter to begin with. There's like a he's like an animal control guy who smuggles like <laughs> magic bees into New York or something. And there's like a bad wizard who's like not as bad as the later wizard who is Voldemort, but it's Grindelwald and they got to catch him. Mm-hmm. So it, this is about the crimes of Grindelwald. Uh, they've got this like this this team of wizards or something. I didn't I couldn't even finish the first one. It got very complicated. I don't know. It's very different than the uh, the crimes of Grinder, which is when you meet a man and you kiss him and you don't call him back. <laughs> don't do that. Please stop talking about Grinder when we're trying to talk Harry Potter movies. All right. I don't anyway. always connect those dots. Yeah. Is that a thing? Can we can we pull up this logo again? I want to do a quick rewind. Do we have to look at the logo. Okay. I've never seen any of these. I don't know what's happening here, but I will tell you what happens <laughs> in this movie. There's a giant snake that turns into a phoenix and he poses as a G, but everyone has to get the power of the Crystal Triangle. The Crystal Triangle is an amazing, amazing beast. Probably, some would say, even fantastic. The only way to beat him is with the eye, which is the sword of the eyeball. That's in the word crimes. And it's a wand, I believe, of sorts. And you can use it to fight the triangle and the G that's a snake and also a dragon. And then I think Grinder's also in the movie. Yeah. I have no idea. I won't watch it, even if I was on a plane <laughs> that was 60 hours long. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, yeah, Harry, Harry Potter, J.K. Rowling, great books. Yep. Crimes of Grindelwald in theaters, November 16th, 2018. Now, the big well, thing... you're away. What are we going to do with our time between now and then? <laughs> I have well, no idea what I'll do. The big thing that happened this week was, of course, the release of Star Wars Battlefront 2. Is that out? Is it out yet? It's out. Okay, so, No. Okay. So if you bought if you, the $80 version on PS4, you can you could have downloaded it on Monday night, which is three days early. Or Everyone if else, you're part of EA Early Access yeah. on PC or Xbox One, yeah. or if you got a code because you review, or an influencer or review yeah, games. Yeah, you're an influencer if you really love nachos or whatever, and they sent you a free game, then good for you. Enjoy the nachos. Uh, yeah. Great. Uh, uh, most everyone else on Earth will be able to play it tonight at uh, 9 p.m., which is not midnight, yeah. but if you're in California, it's a mess. Anyway, Star Wars Battlefront 2 is out. This is where we will start the video. Uh, Max and I have been highly anticipating this game for a very long time. Let's get two things out of the way real quick. There is a massive, massive backlash against this game. Toxicity is higher than I've seen in a very long time for a video game. A lot of it's justified, a lot of it is hyperbole. Um, I'm not gonna sit here and preach to you why loot crates are bad, why they are. I will tell you straight up, and I think Max is in the same boat, neither of us plan to spend money on this game outside of the money that we already spent on this game, which is, you know, $60 or $80 for the full version. Uh, I will not be buying cosmetic DLC. I will not be gambling away my real money on loot crate. I don't wanna do any of that stuff. That said, uh, this game, as huge Star Wars fans that we are, and people who played 100 hours of the last game, which had backlashes for entirely different reasons, um, gets it right in a lot of ways and gets it wrong in a lot of ways. And I think we haven't been able to actually have that conversation right. because the conversation has been so crowded by you know, the, yeah. the, the loot crate stuff, so, the microtransaction, cosmetic DLC, the progression system, Darth Vader behind a pay, oh, right. all this so stuff. Also, real, real quick, the internet is really good at latching on to when something is wrong. They are less good at latching on to when that thing is actually being dealt with or fixed. Yeah. Uh, EA had the most downvoted Reddit comment in history, basically being like, we added tons of microtransactions because of our studies said that it was the thing that everyone wants, and it was just like people were like, what, what's wrong with you? You sound so tone deaf and checked yeah, out. Yeah, which is um, kind of, uh, but yeah, they did. I, I would say it's pretty tragic. I, on, I on, hate that I'm saying this. They did. They did nerf the microtransactions. Yes, they did. They nerfed the economy. Yeah. Uh, they did make it so that it's much easier to unlock stuff. They, initially, it was like something like sixty thousand credits to it unlock was 40, Vader. Forty thousand for Vader. Uh, he's fifteen now. Yeah. Um, they kind of give you like a courtesy two or three when you start up the game. I played a couple matches of multiplayer, a couple arcade mode stuff, and uh, some some single player stuff, and basically had enough to unlock him. So it took maybe three or four hours, which is normal. Uh, I think one of the issues here specifically is that people are pissed off, not that you have to grind to unlock a character, because hey, welcome to video games. I had to play 50 hours to unlock like what the clown costume in Mario Odyssey. Mm-hmm. Um, they're pissed off because you can quicken that by buying into it. And that's, I think, what gets annoying with people. Uh, that said, the currency in this game, if we're really gonna get into it, is kind of a problem. You have credits, you have crystals, and you have 
like crafting parts, and on top of that, you have real world money that you can use to nudge some of that stuff along. It feels further. like a it feels like a three card Monty, where you've got there's a thing hidden under one of the three cups, and they're moving it around so quickly that you can't really tell where the thing is. Right. And what is this solving for? Right. A lot of you are wondering why this is here all of a sudden. This is solving for the fact that the last game at $110 season pass, uh, which for me I kind of liked because I paid for it. It was done, I never had to pay again, and then every two or three months, they were like, here's new levels, here's new characters, here's new weapons, Jabba the Hutt's here, here's his new star cards, he's putting you on little missions. There's all these little things to do, right? Uh, and I liked that because I felt like I had paid once, and I got it out of the way, and I had a reason to keep going back. To solve for that this time, there, the DLC is all free, right? Right, but in it's quotes. got all these micro, everyone's telling us in the chat that they, they Changed the prices for the microtransactions, but they also changed how fast you get them, and it isn't fixed, and that everyone's still mad. Again, yeah. the game is not out yet. We're not trying to defend EA. We're not, we're not wild about what they're doing here. No, Just no. take I'm it with easy. You. We're on your side. Just side note. The, the United States just, like, they just made it okay to import ivory, that stuff they rip out of elephants' faces. Yeah. It's universally just bad, don't kill elephants. Yep. That's a real thing that is a real problem. I'm not trying to play down the space game that has the fake money in it, but it's a space game with fake money in it. If yeah. it really upsets you, don't play it. I want to get sorry. into that. Just... Let's dig into that real quick while we're here. Uh, the, the hyperbole around a lot of this is is is, is really annoying to me because, uh, first of all, we're having a bad year as a world. Um, and to me, if you're in a downvote something, something on Reddit, I don't know, maybe pick something real, like a real thing, and just be like, I don't like that at all. Like, people won't be able to go to a doctor. People really, vote. People really, really hate EA. People really like to get, we, they got voted worst company in America two years in a row. Yep. And that was in a year where there was also like a massive oil spill yep. that like, Killed a bunch of animals and hey, stuff. Didn't, didn't, wasn't there a company that leaked everyone's social security numbers a yeah. few weeks ago? And didn't all the CEOs of that company bounce? And then there's that company that's like got all the student loan debt for people yeah. who can't, like they, they're never going to pay it off because it's, it's subprime yeah. mortgages or whatever. I don't Have you ever been on, on customer service with Comcast? How can you get off a call with them and then be, you know, those guys that throttled the internet like, this year and made it so you can't download one of the thousand gigs a I'm month? Not, I don't want to do that thing where you're like, oh, you think this is a problem? Well, this is a much worse problem. What about them? It's, yeah. it's it's video games. Like, yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm mad as anyone else is that there's a Star Wars game that isn't perfect, but like, I don't know, they got, they, they got the land speeder in it now. Yeah. That said, the game, these games change, they evolve over time, and at launch, we're going to talk about this, we're going we're gonna to judge it on, on where it is right now. I will say that playing the last game, there were really cool things that happened here and there where randomly EA would email me and be like, hey, this weekend if you log on and play like one match or even just go to the home menu, uh, we'll give you 5,000 credits. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, that's cool. Or they'd be like, hey, it's double XP weekend. And I was like, cool, I'm not really into Call of Duty, so I can do that. Um, but we're going to talk about this game as Star Wars fans, which I feel like no one has actually done yet. Everyone has talked about this game as economy majors, as business majors, as gamers. As uh, angry, angry people. Yeah, everybody's talked about this game as, you know, DLC, microtransactions, their cancer, their AIDS, their syphilis, all the other things we throw around all the time. You know, the massive hyperbole, uh, which I understand. They're, they're, in, they're in like all the yeah. big AAA games this year. Yeah, and it sucks, and this is, people are making money, and maybe it's not your fault, maybe you're not the one feeding money into it, but let's seriously pause, let's pump the brakes, and let's talk about this game as Star Wars fans. Because I think that when we sit down to play Star Wars Battlefront 2, as Star Wars fans, the things we're looking for are characters that we love, environments that we love, mm -hmm. Easter eggs that we love, and just the feeling of Star Wars. So I will say, as for the feeling of Star Wars, the music is there, the graphics are incredibly beautiful, the levels are gorgeous and packed with really cool stuff. The yeah. Tatooine level specifically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of really cool stuff there. I, I think it's that, got the frogs. Yeah, I'm, you know, I'm. It's got it's got womp rats. Right off the bat, I, I lost my mind when I saw Dubak in the Tatooine map. Like you get you come out to Tatooine, sorry. You mm -hmm. come out there and there's this Dubak just like plodding around. It yawns. It's gorgeous. It's like the highest res, biggest poly count, big space lizard you've ever seen in a game. And you go up to it and. You can't do anything with it. You gotta. Yeah. You can walk around it. It doesn't bite you. You can't kill it. You can't ride it. You can't climb on it. I think you yep. can ride the Tauntauns. I still haven't found one. There's no way to select individual maps if you really just want to hang out in Moss Eisley and just you know get killed repeatedly while you're staring at the Dubak like I did. But you just kind of got to roll the dice. And I mean, this is all stuff that again, they might patch it in there. I mean, this is this is yeah. That's sort of their their plan here is that they're like, hey, uh. The game, the campaign isn't even really finished. That's a weird thing. You beat the game, no spoilers here. There's sort of an ending, and they're like, continue Iden's adventure in multiplayer. And it's like, 
You can, but there's also story DLC coming. It's free. Yeah. That's coming out in like a month. They don't say that anywhere, and which so, is sort of a sort of a mistake. So to talk about the multiplayer real quick, um, which I do I do like because I think the shooting mechanics feel great, and I think the sound design and graphics are gorgeous. Um, where it starts to lose me is to me like Star Wars is about personality, mm-hmm. right? And the last game let you unlock a lot of, and admittedly cosmetic. Uh, heads for your multiplayer characters, right? You could get uh, Twi'lex and Weequays and Celestins and all those dudes, right? And they're all great, weird alien faces. And to me, when I watch Star Wars, uh, and the reason I don't watch like other stuff that's just about like dudes going to space, like generic space adventure stuff, is because like there's a Duros and there's mm-hmm. uh, you know an Ishi Tib and they're all friends. They're all hanging out with each other. You can Google these names. They're all weird looking dudes, right? When you walk into the cantina, it's not just fifty guys hanging out. That's boring. It's like this montage of insane alien people. And that's what makes it so fun. And the last game had a very sort of, I would say, borderline broken currency in that you had to grind and fight and claw and scrape to unlock enough points to maybe get Nian Num's head. Right. And you would put it on your adult man body and it looked weird and you'd get shot because he looked different. He had big fat cheeks. Yeah, having having like a lady twee like head is actually a major disadvantage because you're the only neon blue thing on the yeah, map. Yeah, exactly. You can see it from a mile away. Yeah. Your, little, your little tentacles are popping up. Dudes are headshotting it. Um, all of those are gone from the multiplayer in this game. And so what you're left with, you have basically four different trooper classes, which are all human, adult, men, or women. Or you have stormtroopers, which you can't really tell what's going on underneath. Or you have battle droids, which I will say, I love their animation, I love their sounds. I had a big smile across my face the first yeah. time I saw them. The coolest thing about them is those are this, these are the best looking battle droids in Star Wars history. These are high, these are better quality CG than the ones they're based on in the movie. Yeah. Like, that's, so a lot of the people in the, in the comments are saying the cosmetic stuff is coming soon. Awesome. I'm excited for that. It's all over the single player campaign. You see it in NPCs, even in multiplayer, uh, which they've packed to the gills mm-hmm. with like just cool little details at this point. You and I were talking earlier about the Tatooine map, where when you start out, like there are stormtroopers harassing oh, people so in good. the marketplace. It's also like kind of a screw running. They're, everywhere. they're not even they're like not even NPCs. They're like decorations. They're yeah. just like these weird. They're like the stormtroopers just being like. Let me see your ID. Uh, yeah. What are you What are you doing here? So and there's just like random like market people being like, I don't know, I don't know. And then if you're playing as a stormtrooper, you can go stand next to them, and it looks like you're just blending in. It's not really a tactical advantage because you still have a red thing above your head if you're on the opposite team, whatever. And so all that stuff's really cool, but then you get to the menus, and the UI just feels very sort of bland. It doesn't really feel Star Warsy. It doesn't like I would have loved if they were like, this feels like what it's look what it looks like to be looking at a targeting computer or something. Go out right. after the UI and some of the industrial design we see in Star Wars already. So. From a sort of minimalist, kind of confusing UI uh, is coupled with the progression system, which to me, um, I won't say borderline broken because I straight up haven't figured it out yet. Um, the game doesn't do a good job of explaining it to you how it works, but like I said earlier, there are multiple types of currency. You've got crystals, you've got crafting agents, you've got uh, star cards, you've got credits. Yeah. And now, so you can attribute star cards to your character, and then uh, you can level up those star cards individually. I don't, think, I don't even think you should try to explain it. It's yeah. just terrible. And then, so there are loot crates that you get for free, but you can also unlock using progression, right. or you and can if you pay have, for it with if regular If you get money. a star card in your loot crate that you already have, that's automatically turned into credits. You cannot have duplicates of a card. Yeah. And you also sometimes get parts. I don't know what they're for. Yeah. Uh, somebody in the comments was like, why does this guy, why do these guys sound like EA's PR team right now? I don't think you understand how PR works. Yeah. This is us being confused, baffled, and mildly annoyed, not celebrating. Uh, we'll do that at Star Wars Celebration, a place to celebrate Star Wars. Um, But I don't want to get too negative about this game. Let's go PR for a second. Um, There is stuff I like. I think the single player has a lot of really smart ideas in it. I think some of the new planets are gorgeous. Fondor, like visiting that for the first time without spoiling it or anything, is really interesting. There's a lot of cool environments. There's a lot of taking classic scenarios and characters and letting you sort of see things from a new light. I love Return of the Jedi. It's probably my favorite movie of all time. The concept of landing on Endor right after the Battle of Endor and sort of seeing the fallout from that Mm -hmm. is really, really cool to me because it's the closest I've ever come to feeling like I'm on a movie set right after something happened. Yeah, there's some parts in the the campaign that feel very much like it's a video game and mm-hmm. there's other parts where they really hit that Star Wars that Star Wars vibe perfectly and it feels like you're in I mean it, I had I had like uh, moments where it was reminiscent of like playing like some of my favorite old LucasArts <laughs> games like yeah. there are parts that feel a lot like um, Jedi Knight 2 Jedi Outcast there's parts that feel a bit Dark Forces uh, there's parts that feel even like Shadows of the Empire 
This, uh, this Emperor robot's really, really novel. Uh, a lot guy. of the environments are really cool. The lighting is gorgeous. I'm uh, really into her uh, Iden's droid, which is just like, it's, you know, you don't get to use it for a ton of stuff, um, but for what's there is, is interesting, right? Again, shooting mechanics feel great. You can play the entire game in first or third person. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the flight areas are great too because they put you in just this, like that, that environment specifically, just full of shrapnel, really cool, really gorgeous. It's a, it's a gorgeous video game. Yeah. Like you Looks and that. sounds like Star Wars. Uh, where it bums me out as like a sort of single player game is that I feel like a lot of the campaign gets a little disjointed. Um, you go from one character to another character, you jump around a lot. Uh, which happens in Star Wars, right? We're sort of used I to mean, that. I mean, fun fact, telling a story through a video game, especially one that is uh, made by a massive corporation that is at the at the kind of beck and call of a different one that has the, I mean, you've got, you've got Disney, Lucasfilm, and EA all kind of, uh, that's a lot of cooks in the kitchen right there. Yeah. And then the fact that it's a video game, which is not really the best way to tell the story, and then it's the fact that this is primarily a multiplayer video game and the campaign is sort of just fan service. It's a special treat thrown yep. in there. The story has problems, and I don't think it's necessarily the fault of the story. It's, I don't it's, think so either. I think, like, I mean, a lot of these things, there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of spoons in the soup, basically. And I think at this point, uh, you don't really get... I mean, it's, it's kind of a miracle when a, a, a single-player Star Wars game releases in 2017. Because, A, there's so much that has to happen that's canonical, that has to cross-reference every other thing that's ever happened. B, we just saw what happened with Visceral. We had uh, Julian Egbrecht on the sh on NVC last week who worked at Factor 5. He talked about the Wii version of his Star Wars game getting canceled, even though it was completed. Like, LucasArts shut down... Um, like or the games department yeah. basically yeah, like they're, it's they're... it's not easy. Uh, that said, like from a game perspective, I like what they're doing here. I will say that like when I want to really poke around the corners, there's Easter eggs, there's cool little things. But what I think it's missing is some of the collectibles are basically just a thing that they tell you you got a collectible, but you have to back out of the game and go into your career mode to see what you actually got. It's... And sometimes it's like a couple of credits, sometimes it's some crafting elements, but it's never really like. Concept art or like music or it's literally not a collectible. Like, it's you, a checkbox. You box. and I collect Star Wars action figures. Yeah. This is this is the Star Wars action figure, the Black Series action figure of the Inferno Squad that you know Janina's character, Iden Versio, is based on. Um, give me a give me concept art for this character. Mm. The last game, no one really cared about it, but I did. Uh, had like these models that you can unlock. It was sort of like this diorama mode they called it, and it let you say like, "Hey, I worked my ass off on this thing. I got this like the most high res video game model art." of Boba Fett ever made. And I was spinning it around, I was sending pictures yeah. to you, I was tweeting pictures out, like, give me all that stuff, you know? Like, for for a Star Wars game, knowing that Star Wars fans are crazy about collecting, they're crazy about Easter eggs and every little detail, I mean, this, um, this it's kind of missing a lot of this that This game stuff. feels like it's, it is a, it's a product first and, a, and a, a creation second, and unfortunately that's a reality that Star Wars exists in right now, is that it is this, it used to be just a movie, and then it became a universe, and it's just sort of, there's a lot of moving parts to it, and uh, I don't know, when you're shipping something like this, like, the bottom line is the bottom line, yeah. and I'm not making any apologies for it. It sucks, but I feel like when that's sort of your, the mentality in, in making something, it's easy to forget what the appeal of the actual thing is. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there's all kinds of, and of course, everyone likes Star Wars for different reasons. Well, the, you know, the, the game itself is sort of a potluck dinner, right? The story was written in Montreal. The uh, f shooting uh, was done by, uh, what, in Sweden? And yeah. then the flying stuff was done by DICE in the UK. <laughs> so it's sort of like when you have Thanksgiving dinner and everyone brings a dish and you sit down and you're like, well, we ate, but like, yeah. this didn't really well, feel cohesive. There's a there's an expression which is uh, a camel is a horse designed by a committee. <laughs> if that's that, then this is a this is like a Star Wars animal, like a Ronto or an Eope. A camel is, is a horse with an armrest. This is well, this is like some six-legged brontosaurus camel that is in Star Wars only. It's th which there's a lot of pieces to it. Kind of sounds like a Star Wars character. Yeah, that'd be cool. With uh, that. So look, I'm gonna keep playing the multiplayer. I'm gonna see like how the progression goes. Also, like games change now, right? Games grow, they evolve. Sometimes they get better. Sometimes they get worse. Um, I know specifically the uh, you know the thermal detonators in the last game were like one hit killer when the game launched. If you look at um, Han Solo's gun, uh, was just like. Devastating. Mm -hmm. It was a pre-order bonus, basically. And they nerfed all these things, and things got better, things got worse. They added Cloud City, they added Chewbacca, they added, you know, Yoda's in the new game. There's a lot there to like, and there's a lot to find. And I think, as usual, the last game, you and I spent $110 on the season pass. A year later, that game, with everything, was like 20 bucks. Yeah, and of bucks. course, it was a year later, and like Rogue One was in theaters, and we're like, guys, Battlefront! Everyone's just cricket noises, like yeah. no one's playing it anymore. I'm, I'm at that point with Battlefield 1. I love Battlefield. Uh, 
weirdly enough, I jumped into that. I was like, I was playing Battlefront and being like, this isn't doing it for me. And I jumped yeah. into Battlefield. I'm like, am I crazy? Am I just out of practice with shooters? Jumped into Battlefield. Uh, I suck at I suck at games. I'm terrible. I'm very bad. Jumped in there, came in dead last in a match, but I still had a fun time because I was like running around and like giving people med kits and like mm -hmm. killing guys with a shovel. Actually, I unlocked a gaffy stick, which is weird. That apparently the, the Tusken Raider Club thing is in fact a World War One weapon. And so I opened a Star Wars themed loot box in in Battlefield, and it gave me a Star Wars weapon that I don't actually have in the Star Wars game that I'm also playing, which was very baffling. Dude, it's like it's it's also like I don't know. I, I for a very long time I've been able to watch. I've I've watched the prequels, and they've grown on me over time. I mean, a lot of us had a sort of a knee jerk reaction to them, but there was stuff that was like un, undoubtedly cool from from the jump, and that's like a planet like Camino. And the first time I got to walk onto Camino in this game, I was stunned because I was like. This is perfect. This is a gorgeous level here. Uh, and I really, really liked it. Or talking about like Yoda on Naboo for the first time in arcade mode and him running out uh, and just flipping in the air and killing a bunch of uh, battle droids who were like, Roger, Roger. And there's like weird furniture everywhere that's flying around yeah. everywhere. Or like I punched the guy in the face as Lando behind like uh, the most Icely Cantina, which I was walking around. Going to Maz Kanata's castle was super cool because you and I were like really into that scene in the movie from the perspective of guys who really like the aliens and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The single player campaign, like there's all these weird characters there that you see in the film. Revisiting famous locations, walking through them was really cool to me. I think one of the things I don't like in multiplayer is you make a left turn and it looks like a hallway you can walk down and all of a sudden the screen goes black and white and you have a counter saying mm -hmm. turn around. And I'm like, well maybe just put some crates there, yeah, put yeah. a wall there. Like something, I feel like the, the, the design of the maps are kind of disjointed and confusing. Well, they'll um, give you something to go look at and then they don't let you go look at it, which is yeah. like, I, do you understand that that's a, you made something really cool, let me go poke around. And, also the fact that this game doesn't have a camera mode is just, it, it hurts me. There's It's so gorgeous. A photo mode? I just, yeah, I just want to yeah, go in no, and like totally. And, like, I love a, a photo, mode, photo mode yeah. in this game. So um, yeah, this is what I want. I want more collectibles, I want a photo mode, I want a uh, sort of a better explanation of how the progression system works. Um, I want to see more from Aiden Versio because I think she's a really cool character yeah. and I think well, the people that she uh, spends time with are also really cool and interesting. Um, I'm not giving up on this. I'm not giving middle fingers to the entire game industry or EA as a company. I'm not downvoting anything on Reddit. I'm glad that people protested. You should protest when you don't like things. Yeah. You should speak with your wallet as well. There's a couple things like, to keep in mind. Let's, let's yeah. draw a line somewhere between like, this is right. the worst company in the world. This is the most downvoted thing on earth. Like, let's be balanced and measured because gamers are kind of embarrassing sometimes. Let's let's talk about this. People are always like, "This is this is a sixty dollar game." Games don't cost like sixty dollars. The fact that it stayed at that at that price point for a, a decade or more is kind of insane. Yeah. Uh, look at how much a coffee costs. Look at the prices at like at McDonald's. Things get more expensive. The fact that games have stayed there while at the same time now being available in four K and HDR. It, and they're still the same price. Yeah. yeah. I mean, games again, have gotten better. They cost the same amount. I'm not saying we should charge more for them, but maybe we should. Everyone gets really mad at microtransactions and wants to burn down EA and says they're the worst company on earth. If it bothers you that much, hold off and buy it used. The game that is out, it's not even out yet. Again, it comes out next week. The game that will launch, the thing on the disc, is not the final game. It's not the finished game by any means. Mm -hmm. um, Look at look at Destiny. Look at Overwatch. These are games that get stacked and built on after the fact. They get they get patched and they get kept alive when they yeah, have Yeah, I mean, look, look at Breath of the Wild. I played that game for 120 hours and six months in, they're like, we showed you where you walked now, but you have to pay for it. And most people were like, I love Breath of the Wild. And I was like, me too. But like, I don't know. There was no backlash against that because like Nintendo is, you know, they're wonderful. They're a yeah. family-friendly company. So look. These games will change, they'll evolve. We're big Star Wars fans. I'm trying to be as measured about this as possible. While also, yeah, sticking the knife in EA a little bit. Cause I think, I do think that progression is sort of borked. And I think it is a little gross to like, we're putting up a video today on IGN where we spent a hundred dollars in this game on loot crates and spoilers, we get like effing nothing for it. Like it's not great. So yeah. like before you go in the comments and you're like, oh, these guys are on the on the uh, you know on the on the take or whatever. Like, look, I just want a good Star Wars game. You all do. Yeah. Like we're huge dorks. Also, I, saw, I saw somebody death. in the chat being like, uh, this th you're not real Star Wars fans if you're not supporting what they're doing. It's like, uh, are you what? kidding me? People have been complaining about the thing that says Star Wars on it since Return of the Jedi. Yeah. People were like, oh, he walks for teddy bears as they sold out. And literally every Star Wars movie since then, somebody had has had something negative to say about it. Yeah, and that movie's so good, I have it in German. I think that's what that is. <laughs> Rucker to Jedi yeah. Ritter. Who knows? Anyway, uh, Jackpot anyway. Jones THX 1138 says, These guys are awful. Thank you for tuning in. It's wonderful you could join us. I just, 
I, we had this conversation surrounding Mass Effect 3. People got really mad at the ending of that. EA does some really, really dumb stuff. They do some really dumb stuff. They also, they're a massive, massive company. They are a huge target. There's a lot of people working there. Uh, instead of just getting openly angry and being like, I hate this, shut this down, get loud about feedback that are specific things to change. It's and like, it's, I'm so torn because I'm mad, but also, like, this is the company that finally let me ride a Tauntaun. So, like... Where do we land on this? <laughs> it's hard. It's hard. Uh, Star Wars games, uh, we are five years into the uh, Star Wars license with EA having sort of the exclusivity on that. Um, we'll see what happens next. We have five more years to go. Maybe it'll get renewed. Maybe it won't. I think there's a lot of different things that could happen. Uh, but in the meantime, one thing we are a few years into is the DC... EU. E yes. The, the, the extended the DC universe. Um, so far that has given us Man of Steel, Batman vs. Superman, and Wonder Woman. Oh, excuse me, you forgot Academy Award winner Suicide Squad. How dare I? That anyway. always feels like the weird cousin of those films. Yeah. Um, you and I have a tradition around these parts where you, me, and a bunch of our friends get together and we go on a Saturday morning to go see the newest DC movie. Um, it ends up usually not great. And then we walk out and it's 2 o'clock in the afternoon. We start day drinking and yelling at a bar. People look at us like we're insane because it's just like, We're I don't just know, yelling about the clown and we're, we're like, We're what? dressed like yeah. idiots. You know, we're dumb. Yeah. And then the comments are always, and I, I put up the only we're, mean we're, tweet I write yeah. the entire year. And the comments are always like, this is not for the f critics. This is for the fans. And even though they're, it's, the same, it's the same thing. Uh, but anyway, little weird thing happened this time around. Everyone reviewed Justice League. And when everyone reviews something, something happens. Those reviews get pushed together in a big ball, a tomato-shaped ball, and sometimes that tomato is green, and sometimes it is red. But that review number, again, have to remind you, not written by one man, Rotten Tomatoes is not a dude, no one is mean enough to name their kid that. I am tired of Robert Tomatoes' scathing reviews of my favorite super films. Uh, so Robert Tomatoes has a new review up, but Robert Tomatoes did something <laughs> different. <laughs> he did something different this year. He didn't want to tell everyone what his review for Justice League was. Why did he want to do that? Because Warner Brothers owns 30% of Robert Tomatoes, and Robert Tomatoes wanted to keep it a secret. He wanted to do a magical unveiling. So I think what Robert Tomatoes wanted to do was eventize the number that they didn't own because the number is an average of all the people who funneled numbers into Robert Tomatoes. Yes. Also, I really hate that, I, I, I hate that we are taking these beautiful works of whatever they are, whether they're games or movies or these things that are the works of just hundreds of thousands of people and there's ideas and there's art and they have to film the thing, they have to, they have to code it, they have to animate it, they have to do all this stuff, and then it turns into a number. Yeah, it, You take that the sucks. most infinite, sprawling, complex thing and you boil it down to a percentage? Like a, it's not even, it's not even like a report card, it's just like a, what percentage of this is good? I can't, it's, to me it's like if I take some of my favorite art in history and I put a number next to it, I can't. Like, or like some of my favorite, like, okay, like my wedding day. What's that? Like, if I didn't say 10, my wife would kill me. But what if I was like 8.9? I had diarrhea that morning. I was nervous. Let's be honest. There's my review of my wedding day. 8.9. I pooped twice in the morning. I had a vodka soda and a sandwich for lunch. I felt better and I, had, I got married and it was great. But you know, the campaign started slow. You know, I think there's probably like there are probably Tomatoes. to be if we're being totally objective here. I think there are there are just regular old Tuesdays out there. Yeah, it might have been better than your wedding day because there was no diarrhea. Well, I was telling this to you the other day. You got all depressed on your birthday. You're like, it's not a good birthday. And I was like, this year you wrote a hovercraft, you interviewed Jackie Chan, and you met Han Solo. Those were all on days that you were not born. Yeah. If you're really like, if you put a lot of pressure on your birthday, you're kind of a simpleton. Nobody got me a pinata, and I'm irate. Yeah. Uh, anyway, no, I don't know. so we, uh, we, 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 we decide we we cosplay as a comment section after we see a DC film. We get blind drunk in the afternoon and shout in a bar about Will Smith's beard. Uh, like, yeah. So anyway, we're going now live to the Robert Tomatoes homepage, where oh we're going to look God. up the, the score for Justice League. Don't go to oh. RobertTomatoes.com. I don't think that's a good thing. No, that sounds gross. Uh, Justice League is at a forty percent right now. So for the record, let's take a look. It's right here. That's wow. Um, yeah, Here so that is better than Suicide Squad and Beavis. Be yeah, 
<laughs> I, so what so, I like this is uh, things are looking up. It's, it's half it's, as good as uh, more, less than half as good as Wonder Woman, but also want to see. I feel like is just a very asinine metric. Yeah, it's like I feel like you wouldn't be on this page if you didn't want to see it. Who comes here and is like completely? They don't know what this is at all, and they assess it, and they're like, ah, forty percent. It is uh, it is considered bad by most people. I would still like to see it. Yeah, like, that's like I don't. That's like when I don't know when dogs want to eat stuff that's poison. Like my dog always wants chocolate. I'm like, you can't have this. This is poison. It's like if I was like, if I don't know, I saw a car and I was like, ooh, that exhaust looks delicious. I'd love to huff some of that. It's so like, it's not. I shouldn't have that. It's bad. So let's see some of the things that Robert and his friends have had to say about this film. Uh, J.R. Jones from the Chicago Reader, a great friend of Robert Tomatoes, says the movie is a clumsy steamer trunk of content, <laughs> continuing storylines and returning stars. That sentence is kind of a clumsy steamer trunk, but we'll let it pass. Colin Covert from the Minneapolis Star Tribune says the erratic and fatigue-inducing Justice League will leave moviegoers wondering where to assign the blame and where to find the exits. We talked before about EA and Battlefront 2 sort of being designed by committee and how all these different things funnel into it. Very similar thing happened here, right? Mm -hmm. Multiple directors worked on this film. Uh, multiple visions happening at the DC Cinematic Universe happen right now, basically. Like, are they comedies? Are they saccharine, sweet, fun superhero movies? Are so, they dark I mean, it's and bleak? Also just confu what is what is BVS? Is it a? It was originally a Man of Steel sequel, and then they put Batman at the front because Batman does better at the box yeah. office. But then they were also like, no, no, no. But this is setting up Justice League. So is it? No. Is, B this, is this BVS two? Is this Justice League one? Or is this Man of Steel three? BVS was when you drank a bottle of Dimetap in high school and you watched MTV two until you fell asleep. That's what that movie was. It was like this nonsensical joining of 40 different music videos that didn't tell one story across but had some interesting things in them. And I think someone drank piss. There was actually a scene where the lady drinks pee. It's weird. Anyway. I hope she's back in this film. Oh, she's dead, right? She's died? She died. She exploded in the pee explosion in the big scene. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, 40%. Classic, classic move from Mr. Robert Tomatoes, who I think, from what I've heard, isn't a true fan of the Batman movies. Sounds like the check from DC didn't clear, and Mr. Tomatoes is very angry. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. All right. Let's let's move on because we'll have plenty more to say about this movie once we get let's... blind drunk on Saturday. Oh, it's gonna be bad. Yeah, I, I'll have a bone to pick with you, Robert Tomatoes, and that doesn't make any sense because tomatoes don't have bones; they have skin it's and like flesh. A seed. And a anyway, seed. All right. Uh, we love toys here. Yeah. Uh, one game that was really cool that got that had toys in it, and then it got en ended was Disney Infinity. That was a fun game. Uh, that was uh, some of the, that was the secretly the best Star Wars game that came out the year that Battlefront came out. Um, yeah. You could screw around on Endor. There were Ewoks. You could throw them at stuff. It was wild. It was a good time. And the whole thing was all based around these cool action figure little figurines. Uh, and they are no longer uh, commercially viable at all. They ended them. Also, Ray's staff broke. I'm sorry about that. Uh, these are really fun. I feel like Disney Infinity totally got ended prematurely. Uh, the designs were great. Uh, some concept art showed up after the fact. And I was sort of like, this looks cool. This all looks like, I don't know, Disney Afternoon stuff, but it's like Star Wars toys. That's yeah. neat. Uh, lo and behold, uh, Disney has started making action figures that are called toy box figures. And they are doing Star Wars and Marvel ones in addition to like Toy Story and a bunch of other stuff like that. And they all have this cool st uh, style guide. And these just started showing up. They're on sale now. They're like 13 bucks. They've got tons of articulation. I got a photo of them here. Uh, and they've got uh, they've got a bunch of uh, you know pre or sequel trilogy figures. I like I really like this funky funky first order stormtrooper. They've got like ball jointed ankles. You can see uh, accessories. There's one. It's actually really funny. The um, the Woody figure from Toy Story. I don't have a picture of it here. It has a it has a, a boot. It launches a snake, you know, because Woody always says there's a snake in my boot. So I love like that. A little, it's like, a t they're stupid toys. They're for children, obviously. Mm -hmm. But they're like, they're really nice. Uh, the Marvel ones are, are really fun, too. I hope these continue. Uh, currently, I think they're only at, um, I think they're only at Disney Store and Toys R Us. Uh, look at that weird, look at that weird Thor. Can we, can we talk about that pipe? Yeah, he hated the pipe. That's... He really didn't like it. Look at those, look at those sweatpants. So, uh, fat feet. At, at my parents' house, they have these storm drains on the outside, and every now and then chipmunks would run into them, and the dogs would like run outside and just bite on the ends of the chip, the, the storm drains to keep the chipmunk trapped inside, and then it ended up tearing it off, and it would just be this like mangled pipe with like a chipmunk dead inside. That's what that pipe looks like. Take yeah, a look. I could kind of see that. I bet you there's a dead chipmunk in there. And Hulk's real hungry, and he's been gnawing on the end of it to try to get that sweet, sweet meat. I kind of I kind of hope these take off and they, they start going. So I, I love action figures. Uh, very quietly, I've, we're both big fans of Zootopia. 
Really like that film. Quietly. Oh, yeah, I sorry. love that. We animals. love Zootopia. Where is Zootopia 2? Zootopia. That's, That's probably my favorite movie called. where I'm rooting for the cops. Do you think they should call it Tootopia or Zootopia? Zootopia, I think. <laughs> <laughs> um, the action figures for that were awesome. They were like really, they were, like, had a ton of articulation, yeah. a lot of accessories. They're really fun. Uh, I like but the I fox didn't... and he's got that disheveled like thing like he just got laid off. Yeah. You know, the... the... Yeah. Or whatever. They were great. I don't know. Yeah. It was a good time. Anyway, these toys so these, are, real these cool. toys like are cool. I'm probably going to go try to grab some. I hope they do a Boba Fett so I can have it on my desk. Uh, yeah. I, I like that just, Ray. I really do. They're neat. Yeah, those are great. Um, so we played a game. It's not a game, it's a simulation. It's called Farming Simulator 2017, and we are bad at it. Let's take a look. This is so much fun. <laughs> and girls, it's Brian and Max from Up and Noon, and we're playing Farm Simulator, Nintendo Switch Edition. I think it's actually Farming Simulator, which is the act of going to the farm and wrestling around with these trucks. They got all kinds of trucks at the farm. This is the regular truck. I've met the first enemy in the game, the ghost. <laughs> what is that? The ghost. Is that where you're supposed to put the corn, I think? I don't have the corn. Go and do some sick jumps. This car looks like it has corn CDs in it. Probably does. I don't think that even has a CD player. Do you want to do a jump? Do some sick jumps in this funny truck. It's called the Lizard Pickup Rodeo. That's the name of the truck. Not, it's not a fun uh, thing you do in the game. You don't pick up lizards in a rodeo. Hell yeah. That's the quietest car accident I've ever heard. Go chase down those crooks over there. They're trying to steal your apples. Are they coming to my farm to steal apples? You better run those guys off the road. They're trying to take all your delicious snacks. Get out of here, you. Hell yeah. This is GTA now. It's apple rustlers. How big is this map? This is nuts. Let's go to the end of the world. All right. So this game is about Ram farming. Up. Ram up. We're not... Okay. I'm trying... It's very wiggly. It's probably because you've got, uh, I don't know, some kind of uh, gourds or squashes lodged in your steering column. Okay. <laughs> Take his car. Can you, can you jack his car? No, you can only drive your own car. Mercy, what a what a debacle I had on the way down to the uh, the different farm. There, some of the one of the farm fellows <laughs> drove the truck the wrong way. That didn't go great. You should steal that sedan and turn it into an agricultural sedan. Hey, it's a get sedan. Out. Get out of the car. Is he just avoiding eye contact? He doesn't want you. To... Use some guns. <laughs> hey, <laughs> how's it going? You are like the worst <laughs> farmer right now. I'm a farmer. All right. All right. So, so far, we've done some good farming stuff. Is that the same man in both trucks? But today, we're going to try to jump into the cricket. <laughs> yeah. A lot of people don't know this about farming, but it's important to get in the water. you got to clean all the farm stuff yes. off of your legs. You're covered in dung and different bark chips. Can you dive? Or just, no, you just sort of paddle around. A lot of people know farmers also float. I feel like we're playing this game very wrong. You think? You think a little bit, a tiny bit, maybe, kind of, sort of? A little bit. Hey, can I drive, drive one of the trucks? I want to get over there. No, hold on, see I want to see how our accident Who was hogging the tractors? I want to do the tractor <laughs> stuff. Shh. Oh, a new truck has arrived. <laughs> is it the same man in that one, too? I think it is. It's None just, of these cars know how to go oh, around. Oh, look at that. You've got another Al Borland in there. Is this Al? <laughs> is this O.J. Simpson's truck? That actually is. That it is? is? Yeah. Al Borland. <laughs> yeah, look at it. It's an Al Borland convention. Hey. 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 Okay, so you're in hell. Hey, I get it's it. me. Yeah, get, in your, get in your truck and get out of here. These poor people are trying to get to work. <laughs> this man is trying to go to his all of his different jobs across the same multi. See if your truck goes in the water. What happened? Time to drive into the gulch. <laughs> Too <laughs> deeply. <laughs> How about just don't go in there at all? You can't even get down there. You just drive your truck. Look at this drive. <laughs> Well, if the farm is ruined, you're going to have to use a much slower truck to go down to the fair and get the apples. I can't steal cars in this game. No, you can't. It's about farming, not harming. But now I'm just a <laughs> harming simulator. <laughs> now I'm just on foot. Yeah, yeah. It's the ultimate farmer's... I'll be honest, I don't know if your uh, farm's going to do so hot this harvest. What's that? How do you feel about nature? Is that lucrative grass? What is that? How do you do... Purchase. Purchase. Buy it. Oh, an elf. Daria. Whoa. Yeah! Oh, yeah! I got yeah. an axial flow. <laughs> Alright, kick this lawn's ass. I think I have to... How do you turn on it? Uh, push the R button. Or something. What, L, what do L and R do together? I need this. You drift? I need to put this on the car. Excuse what are those, me, uh, sir. What are those turbines in the back there? Oh, you can honk. Do some honking. Is it even honking? It's no, hung, it hums backwards. backwards. 
What? Return to the field. Oh, no. You've left the battlefield. Return to battle. How do I put this thing on my truck? I'll just push it like this. The old I, don't think you're, I don't think it's working at all, really. Yep. Working on try, the farm. You tried backing into it? Cutting down all the corn. Have you tried pulling your truck up next to it and seeing if it plugs in via some, like, USB or something? Why does it make that noise when it's, no one's here? You don't know that if you're in the vehicle. Can you go to first person to see with the... Oh, whoa, look at that. Hell yeah. Are that, is that your guns there on the side? I can tell you the ultimate farmer's treasure is the tunnel. Do not drive this thresher into the tunnel. <laughs> I'm going to drive the thresher into the tunnel. You got like an iPad? I have about nine check seconds. Check how much are your bitcoins worth? I do have an iPad. Oh, it's 111 o'clock. And it's 1898, which was a great year for farming. Are you going 948 miles an hour? Hell oh, yeah. Six. Sorry. I've got nine seconds before exiting this gulch to get into this hole. This uh, this agricultural vehicle really hauls ass. When Here we go. Up. Think I can make it? I don't know. I've got like two minutes to find out. We're doing it. Get in there. We're leaving the farm. We're escaping. We hit the wall. Farming. Let me try. I want to see what's on this farm. I think we've done good so far as farmers, but what do you think our next task is? Well, I'd like to drive a different type of truck. Where's my truck? Is there Sprint? No, there's no cellular data out here. I'm not very T-Mobile, if you know what I mean. Hell yeah. You can see the Verizon from here. It's a funny little hop. Oh, the farmer's hop. Yeehaw. What is it? Sucks that we put our truck in that gulch. Yeah, it was a perfectly good truck. We gotta get back to the farm over there. It's so far. And I ran. I ran so far away. A stream. Would you ever want to be a farmer? No. Yeah, I was thinking Not about really it. Not really at all. I don't want to do that one bit. Dude, Stardew Valley made me want to kill myself because I couldn't find the cave. Didn't know how to make sprinklers. So we found the cave in eight seconds in this game. Where are the frogs? Somebody took all the frogs. There's no frogs in my in my gulch. This is not frogging simulator. Could be. Pretty much frogger. Froger. Froger. This is this looks like Skyrim. This is just this is basically just Skyrim. Max Scoville. This is Skyrim. Dun, 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 dun. Like a sword pop. Down. Yeah, that'd be pretty cool. It's just. It's Let's see what the building number twenty four is here. I want to find out what the secret thing. Those are trees. They don't number them. No, look at the map. Oh. Okay. Well, apparently, it's just a field. It's not actually a building. It's just a large. Empty field. Nobody ever calls this game a walking simulator. But holy hell, it is a walking simulator. It's true. How do, is there a way to, like, fast travel? The map has to load. Okay. We can go to the gas station. Do a dunk. Oh, can, can I buy spawn, snacks? Can I spawn some sick tracks? You can spawn some soybeans. Did I do it? No. Nope. No, nope, that didn't work at all. What did you do? I don't know. I pulled up the thing, and I was like, I'll just get this truck. Fruit types. Sunflowers isn't a fruit. You monster. This sounds like, like a, a weird thing to say, but I don't know if I would want to live in, in these squares. Can I go to the cow house? Yeah. How do I... How do you even fast travel? Oh, wow. Look at all these prices. And they're all in euros. This game is hard. How much are the animals? Let's look. How many pigs do you have? We have none. We have no pigs. We have no manure. They are 0% cleanliness. They are filthy, invisible pigs. Okay. Man, we are really not... Switch to... Tr what in the hell is this game about? Farms are complicated. Farms are the hardest thing in the world. You might as well be a scientist. Like farm cry game. No one there are like, what do I look like, a rocket scientist? They should be like, what do I look like, a farmer? You really have that's, How do I get... Yeah, that's it. That's it, really? Yeah, we did it. We did it. We beat Farming Simulator. What is the, what is, is that like our level down there? No, that's just a, a scroll. You see how much the... Barley interests are at. Here's the thing. What if we uh, had sold all of our pigs and all of our crops, and this is the end of the season, and we're successful and rich, so we like go that. live in the sea with our truck? Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Where is it? Where is it? <gasps> I spawned at the thing. I'm at the lumber yard, the home of the logs. Yes. I've been growing logs. Aren't they beautiful? Look at my harsh bounty of log. I don't want to hear about your log. And this is my sick arrow. I put it down here to know that this is where I park. My truck, where we used to truck. drowned earlier. <laughs> Our truck drowned in a very severe uh, stream accident. Is this a gas stream. station? Ah, the old saw <laughs> where I cut my logs. Let me into the woodland house. I would like to see my logs. Um, uh, is that a guitar? Yeah, is that a small guitar? <laughs> Occasionally, I do small solos on the side of the Somebody yard. went into my tool shed and put all the tools outside. I can't have this at all. 
All right. Is this that an outhouse? This game is fascinating. I mean, it is now. I'm going to go in here and just dump it there. Right there. Yeah, yeah, stop. Do. Stop dunking in there. Stop. Stop it. Stop. 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 Go in. Go up there. Here we go. What's here? What's on the shelf? What do we have? Sort of trinkets. My CD player and my hammer and my and the jumping springs. The foot coils to reach the ceiling. Oh, wow. I'm. Well, you use the jumping springs to access a new area. Do they seriously have jump on the roof? Yeah. Right? That's nuts. Farmers love to jump on the roof at the end of a hard day. Not so bazongas over there. All right. Man. Oh, there's that truck again. Oh, wait, what? How do I? Oh, I got $25,000. Tippers, augers, sprayers, weeders. I don't know what any of this means. Do I buy it? Lisa? Oh, cool. You can buy that awesome scorpion. Yes. You just lease where's it. the store? I guess they leased a, a scorpion. You leased the Mexican scorpion? The Mex 5 scorpion. <laughs> Jim is... This game is frightening and terrifying, and I suddenly have, like... Look at those teeth you can buy for the floor. You can buy all these harmonicas. <laughs> <laughs> Give me that! You buy all these Decepticons. This game. Hell yeah! How do I get it sent to me? We don't, don't have enough buy. Euro. No, I don't. No, I... There go my heroes. Is this what it's like to be European? I think they're smarter over there on account of their schools don't have so much mercury in them. All right. Well, this is a bounty you can purchase in Farming Simulator. We have nothing. We have nothing. There's a truck called Man, which rules. Look at these great trucks. Man, they're such realistic trucks. Anyway, that's Farming Simulator 2017. If you like farming or simulations, you're probably better at this than we are. Also, yeah. if you can read, that helps. We put the truck in the river, and I think everyone was real happy about it. And now none of our farming relatives will ever visit us again. A lot of the locals were very mad at the truck for blocking the road to the tunnel. <laughs> we made a real mess. Thanks for watching. Farm Town Adventures with the farm boys, Brian and Max. Remember, no farm, no foul. We're back. We did it. We did it again. Uh, oh, hey. <laughs> dude in the uh, YouTube chat, Game Emperor, was like, hey, I was like, just, I was just chatting in there. I was like, hey, what, what's going on? And he's like, hey, so what's up? What's your deal? Are you like a moderator for IGN? And I was like, I, you're a uh, host of the show. You're watching. Um, but yeah. Farming Simulator, hot game, real big one, real big good game. Brian's been playing with the Spider-Man toy for Love the last the 10 minutes. Love the Spider-Man toy. He's really so excited cool. about it. You can do all this stuff like you can this is put the, up like this. You can this is the Mar stuff. Marvel Legends uh, Spider-Man Homecoming figure. We unboxed this a while back. Yeah, I just, just really decided love it. to start playing with it. Well, you know, the cool thing about toys is that we have so many of them, and every now and then we just sort of like take one down, like these like weird kings, and then I'll just like it'll be my new favorite toy for a yeah. week. And look then, at his little butt. Look at his little little tushum. Kind of like Ooh. a lot of dogs have like a whole basket of stuff Ooh. they chew on, and like yeah. once a month they'll be like, "Well, this is the new thing that I love to eat." Yeah, it's it's easy to forget like the thrill of one toy when you collect them. Occasionally, yeah. I'll just I'll just yeah I'll just grab one. I bought a, a vintage Kenner Snaggletooth at Star Wars Celebration and just carried it around. We'd get, go to the bar and they'd have like a little like a little sword toothpick in the drink, and I'd give it to him, and I'm like, "Ah, Snaggletooth got a lightsaber." I had that with a, a salacious crumb where I was just like balancing them on cocktails for yeah, like a week. It's, it's fun. It's I want to do that. Uh, Max, you're a huge, huge fan of Akira. I love I love Akira, um, and I grew up I grew up connected to it, but you are on another level. So um, and I, you, I mean you've you've, yeah. you've got the motorcycle, you've you've seen the movie a million let's, times. Let's talk about Akira for a second. Akira, yeah. if you're unfamiliar, is possibly the most impressive animated film ever made. I'm gonna go ahead. They literally had to mix new colors that hadn't been made yet for animation because they needed to get uh, more detail in nighttime scenes, which was hard to do with a set palette. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a, a stupid amount of detail in that in that movie. The movie, story-wise, is a convoluted mess. The comic it's based on is one of the coolest things I've ever read. Uh, I've read this backwards and forwards, almost literally. Um, this is the original version that was been released stateside for a while. All the sound effects and stuff are translated, and they took the entire book and flipped it because traditionally you read Japanese uh, right to left or left to right, right whichever it is. However, they just recently put out a box set that collects the entire series, uh, and it's it's just gorgeous. I just picked this up. It's 130 bucks on Amazon. Here's the, I mean, you can see here's, normally books are like this here, but yeah. they have this one flipped around like this. Um, beautiful. Like, wow. beautiful insides. Um, the actual binding itself is like, it's like a high school textbook, except you want to read it. Um, <laughs> all of the sound effects are in the original Japanese, and my favorite thing here is there is a... There's a glossary of all the sound effects 
So it says like, ba-boom, rumble, go, 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 go. And it's just, it tells you each panel what everything is in there. Uh, I cannot stress this enough. This is one of my, fa this is possibly my favorite comic, period. Uh, I put this above Watchmen, above Dark Knight Returns. It's about 2,000 pages long if you read all six volumes. Uh, and if you grab the collected edition, you can do just that. So this I, is just one out of six is, of the books in the box set, right? This is actually one out of seven of the books in the box set. Uh, I picked this up. Here's a photo of the actual box. It's huge. That's on my kitchen counter. It weighs about 40 pounds. You open it up, it's got those beautiful like slip case that are like little magnets that clip it together. Oh, that's uh, So it's all six volumes, which are like one cohesive story. It's weirdly well paced, very, it's just staggeringly awesome. There are characters in the movie who get killed off in background scenes who have entire plot story, like entire story arcs in the, in the comic. Um, it also comes with a Kira Club, which is a gorgeous art book. Uh, which I actually already had, so if anybody wants a spare, you can come over. I, I, at this point, I literally have two versions of this. I have the whole paperback edition and then the whole, the whole hardcover because I'm constantly loaning it out to people and being like, you have to read this. Uh, again, jump on Amazon, grab this. It's 130 bucks for seven books, which breaks down for hardcovers, which breaks down to somehow cheaper than the paperbacks. So yeah, that's, buy them that's news. stupidly cheap. Um, this art book is just, just beautiful. Um, I, I cannot, I, again, just, just read it. If you care about if you care about fiction, if you care about cyberpunk, if you care about illustration, about anime, about manga, about just storytelling, just go go and read it, please. I beg of you. It's got drug drugs, uh, teenagers doing drugs and riding motorcycles. It comes with a patch. You can put the patch in your jacket. You can you know just it, there's my chest hair. Sorry about that. For your um, health. Yeah, that's the thing that they kind of miss in the in the movie. Uh, those kids are all on drugs. They're like 15 years old and they're just like popping pills and riding motorcycles every which way. It happens. Uh, the movie sort of sort of summarizes the first, I want to say, two volumes of the manga, but it gets insane after that. Everyone's quick to be like, oh yeah, Akira's a lot like Blade Runner. It goes like full Mad Max. It gets completely bonkers. Uh, it's also, weirdly enough, got a lot in common with Stranger Things. Uh, Stranger Things borrowed a lot from uh, the source material. Yeah. Uh, I'm incredibly excited to see uh, if it actually happens. Uh, Taika YTT, who just directed Thor Ragnarok, is talking about doing a, a live-action Akira that's based more on the comic than on the movie. Do you know, which like, that is so... Very cool. Incredibly exciting after hearing about this film possibly happening for 20 years. The idea of that happening is just... Titillating is mm -hmm. the word I'll use. No, it'd be, it's going to be it's going to be gorgeous. If nothing else, I think he's just going to dig into the the weirdness. Also, the nutty thing about this is this. Stop, please don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do titillating. I'm titillating. You can't titillate on this I, show. I was titillated. Um, too late. This is set in what I think 20, 2039 or something. It's set in the future. Coming right up. It's set in the future, but it was written in like the eighties. It's actually the thirty fifth anniversary. So it's weirdly uh, kind of approaching like. We're almost in the time that it's set in. It's almost it's paleo futurism. Is yeah, which is really funny. Also, they're all wearing like kids are wearing all like kind of '80s clothes, and it's stuff that's actually fashionable now. Like if you go into Uniqlo or H and M or something, it's like that's actually what the people in Akira wear. That's kind of odd. Yeah, uh, I hope quick, nothing explodes. Quick, quick plug for something. Um, go to paleofuture.com uh, if you ever want to read about paleofuturism because to me it's so fascinating. It's stuff like we are going to reach the year that Akira takes place uh, in our real lives, but it won't be anything like the future they predicted. So I, that's so fascinating to me. That's all that stuff is so cool. Like we, you know, we're already past Jetson times. Yeah. Like what? I don't have yeah. a suitcase that turns into a car. Do you? I mean, it's so funny. We think about all the um, like all the apps and stuff we have, and all this yeah. like smart technology. And I, I, I'll be like brushing my teeth with an electric toothbrush, and I'll be like, oh wait, I have a machine to brush my teeth. That's odd. And then I. I don't know, I have like an electric wine opener. It's kind of cool. It's a stupid invention, I'll admit, but it's... Now, now Max, in, instead of focusing on the future, I want to talk about history real quick. Um, historically, Thanksgiving has been a great time of year to be very, very full off of very delicious food. Because of Thanksgiving being on a Thursday next week, like it always is every year, we will not be doing it up at noon, but we wanted to leave you with a gift because Thanksgiving is special to us and we think it should be special to you. But you shouldn't just have a regular turkey at Thanksgiving. No. And I don't think you should have one of those John Madden afraid to get on the airplane turduckins either, because that's weird, and who would do that? Yeah. And planes aren't that scary. They give you food on there, sometimes it's turkey. But, Max, yeah. what is the number one way to celebrate Thanksgiving while also terrifying all the loved ones that you probably hate? Thanksgiving is a time of family. It could be a time of horror as well, and there's a website called eatthedead.com. It's called the Necronomnomnomicon and they do spooky, spooky dishes. They just released uh, a recipe for a face hugger that you can eat. Let's take a look at this. It is, uh, it's entirely edible. Yep. This is made from Oof. crab, 
and a roast chicken and homemade chicken sausage for the tail. Oh, is that what that is? Are th I thought they were, are those like chicken meatballs? Are those apples? Yeah, this blew up on Reddit a second ago. Uh, the website is awesome. The second this, this person puts out a, a, a cookbook, I'm buying it. It's incredible. This isn't the first alien Thanksgiving dish they've done. They also did a... Oh my a, God! A chestburster turkey. Um, that, so you, it's, it's hard to tell because it's terrifying. Yeah. Uh, that chestburster is a... It's a tenderloin. It's a pork tenderloin. Pork tenderloin, yeah. and it's uh, roasted garlic teeth. The, no, the teeth are spaghetti. Okay. Yeah. And the blood is cranberry. Oh. So it's it's disgusting, but it also looks pretty good, which is really the key there. I think I'm just especially upset by the face hugger. Uh, fun fact about face huggers: uh, this isn't the first time that someone's made a face hugger using seafood. Uh, Ridley Scott actually went down to the fish market when he was filming Alien, mm -hmm. and if you look at when they're dissecting it, that scene in Alien. That's just a bunch of like oysters and scallops and stuff. He put a bunch of like raw seafood in there, let it sit out for a while. So when the entire crew of the Nostromo is like, ugh, they're recoiling in, in real life because it smelled like a, a, a disaster. So remember, when you spend time with family at the holidays this year, don't just hug them, face hug them. Yeah. With pork tenderloin yep. and other weird and, gross uh, stuff. Yeah, head over to eatthedead.com and learn how to make that just utter, utter nightmare. Yeah, that uh, is our show. Uh, we will not be back next week because we'll be face-hugging our families. That sounded horrible. But uh, hopefully you enjoyed those disgusting pictures we showed you earlier and that we got to yell about Star Wars. Yeah. Thank God there's a place in the world where you and I can yell about <sighs> Star Wars. We, we seriously, we made a short show this week. We are like, I hope we can fill a whole 45. We did the usual Yeah, there's a whole hour. bunch of stories. We, we didn't even yeah. get to a, bu we have a bunch a of stuff over toys. here. We're going to yeah, talk about toys. toys. We're like, in case we run out of time, like... we can talk about these swoops. We've got a whole thing. That's... Anyway, yeah. thank you for watching. I hope you have a wonderful, safe Thanksgiving with your family and uh, from all of us here at Up at Noon, including those weirdos in the studio back there. Uh, thanks for tuning in, and we love you. Goodbye. Goodbye. Aw. The ghost. <laughs>